Shout out to the Tyler family. Uh, I am gracious. We are in the week of Feast of Dedications. I am be praised for all that he does for us. I'm your brother, Zach Wah, and this is your brother, Kasafo, and we are Hebrew Readers Church. We greet you, and anyone that's new, we, we greet you as well. Uh, if you have any questions, please send us a, a question in the chat below or send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. We are going to dive into some real pertinent information for the men. Today is definitely going to be an admonition for the men. After we're going into a three-lesson series. Is that right, Brother Casa? Or do we got more lessons in, in line for that series? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be more than three. This is just a start because the, the men, we have to get it together so that we may be an example to all. Um, this is actually lesson two of the three-part series. So we're continuing here. All right. So definitely go and check out the the first lesson. Also, what was the first lesson? Building, building the men in Christ. Building the men in the faith. Building yeah, the men so in the I'm faith. Building the men of, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll see it before this video. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely just go back and look at the last lesson. <laughs> Uh, I am good. It's going to be a great lesson today, and we just hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, with no further ado, let's jump into it. All right. The man of Christ. This lesson is to discuss understanding what the man of Christ's calling is in the Lord. Brother, can you read Romans chapter 12, verse 1, please? Uh, Kafa, there's something going on a little bit with your mic, but I, I think everybody can hear me. Um, we will come back in well in a minute. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. Yache, our shepherd, has given his life for us to turn from our sins. Therefore, we are to perform this acceptable service. Can you read John chapter 10? Verse 11 and 15, please. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. Continue, please. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for, my, for the sheep. And that example he set is for us to follow. As we are shepherds of our households, therefore we have to lay down our life for our sheep as well. And also in knowing the Father, as he laid down his life, so are we to do so as examples of people that know the Father by being living sacrifices. And also the sheep that Christ Yache laid down his life for are not only of the house of Israel, but also of the Gentiles, for he is the Elohim of all. Can you read John chapter 10, verse 16, please? And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. Can you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18 to 20, please? This is concerning our brethren. In the faith through Abraham. All right, continue, please, brother. But through him both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now Amen. therefore, now therefore ye are no more strangers than foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of Elohim. Man, continue please. And are built up the, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yahweh Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. This, it's the spirit of Yache working in the apostles and prophets for us to hear his voice and follow him. Can you read John chapter 10, verse 27, please? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. All right. So it's for us all, brothers of all nations. And our master gave us good word and good example for us to follow. Can you read John chapter 13, verse 13 to 17, please. Ye call me Master and Adonai, and ye say, Well, for so I am. 
for so if he is. Excuse me. For I no, then saying... your if I then oh. your donor and master I wash your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. That lets us know servitude unto one another as well, even as our Lord and Master Yahweh Christ has done unto us. Continue, please, brother. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Amen. Continue, please. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is no greater than his master, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Amen. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Knowing that we are no greater than the Lord who sent us into the world, and we are to do as he has done. And this does make us happy because it's this knowledge of this truth that sets us free. Can you read John chapter 8, verse 32 to 36, please? I'm sorry, 32, verse 34, and verse 36. Okay. John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. We came to serve. That's the truth of the gospel. We came to serve in humility in this world. And this is our joy and our easy yoke in Christ Yahweh. Continue, please. John chapter 8, verse 34. Yahweh answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. This is true. We've come to serve sin through pride. Pride in according to the book of Sirach. Pride is the beginning. That's why our Lord Yache calls us unto the yoke of humility to become a servant and learn to be perfected through obedience that we may no longer be servants of sin. And this calling in him, since it's him that's calling us, we can truly be free according to his, his word. Can you read the next verse, please? John chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. This is why the preaching is Yahweh Christ in us, the hope of glory, because it's him working in us that's making us free, and it's him going to fulfill it. This is why we don't have to trust in ourselves, but trust in the living Allah I am. And with this calling, what is the admonitions of the apostle? Can you read Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14, please? Well, brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen. This liberty that Yahche has set us free from sin through his blood is not an occasion for the lust of the flesh, but it's an occasion for us to serve one another by love. Continue, please, brother. Amen. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do so, and we shall fulfill the commandments. Let us follow his love by serving one another to fulfill the law, to stay free from sin. Can you read Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10, please? Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Amen. For this, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice, brothers and sisters, oh, well, this is to the brothers specifically. We have to go learn the law to fulfill this love. Because he says, if there be any other commandment, it is br briefly comprehended in this saying. We have to learn the rest of the commandments. He knows we have the scriptures. So we have to go study and show ourselves approved that we are acceptable and rightfully dividing the word and are brought on to the perfection of the servant of Allah. I am. So that's an encouragement for us to study that we may love our neighbor as ourselves. Continue, please, brother. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. 
the fruits of the spirit. When we work no ill, we're not doing anything in malice, but we're walking in simplicity and guilelessness, which are some of the 12 holy virgins. So we see how the fruits of the spirit ties in to fulfilling this love and the law sows the fruits of the spirit in our heart. So may we be encouraged to do so. This way of life will lead us unto Christ. Can you read Romans chapter 10, verse 4, please, brother? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. There we see what our goal is. Now that we're getting into this studying, and we're, we're studying so that we may be doing it. We're studying so that we may practice the right things to make sure all our actions are without guile and actually in love. And in this process, we know what our end of the law is. The end goal is Christ Yache for us because we believe in that great name and his blood. Let us follow after him. Can you read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 to 4, please? Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I will right. have you know. These are the... Excuse me. Go ahead. I was just... Yes, these are the ordinances of the Lord that have been handed down to us as we're about to read. So, sorry. It's okay. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is Elohim. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors it. This honor of his head. That, that's our straight admonition, our ordinance from the Lord. We are not to pray or prophesy with our heads covered. Now, Paul explains why we ought not to cover our heads. Can you read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7 and 11 and 12, please? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of Elohim. That's why we ought not to cover our heads. Continue, please, brother. But the woman is the glory of the man. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. So there we see, yet, even though the woman is our glory, yet. We are not without each other in the Lord because Ahaya is of equity. He's of unity, of oneness. We both need each other. Continue, please, brother. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of Elohim. Amen. Man and woman in unity is of Elohim. And the spirit is beautified in the agreement of married couples. Can you read 20, uh, Sarat 25 and 1, please? In three things I was beautified, and stood up beautiful both before Elohim and men, the unity of brethren. Do you want to touch on these one by one, or you want to just keep on going through them? As I was, um, it's just as she said, when we brethren walk together, here we are doing these lessons on building the men in the faith. These, we can see the purpose is that the spirit may be beautiful in our unity amongst each other. So amen for that. Continue, please. Amen. The love of neighbors. We've just learned that fulfilling the law, that will cause us to love our neighbors. So we know this is also with purpose of beautifying the spirit by doing, learning the commandments and practicing them so that we may bear the fruits and she may be beautified. Continue, please. A man and a wife that agree together. This is becoming the image of Allah because she and her husband, the Holy Spirit and the Father, agree together. So this is a good understanding of why we are one, why the husband and the wife ought to be one, walking in unity in the image of Allah. Can I touch on that? Husbands are what? Of course. Because you know you just said something. <laughs> 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 I mess with you. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because he said that just like the the Holy Spirit, the Mother and the Father, how y'all one, they're united, they're in agreement, they're walking together. 
look at what they built. They brought forth a son and children, right? And they created the whole heavens, the whole earth together. So walking with your husband and being in unity, or specifically we're talking about the brethren, walking with your wife and being in unity, think about how much you can build in the faith. Think about how much fruit you can bring forth. Think about how much Allah would bless that, the, the works of your hands just by being in unity. Being in unity with Allah and also being in unity with your household, your wife, your children. But specifically, this is talking about the husband and the wife because that's what it takes to build a strong foundation. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Oh, bless you, Ajay. All right. And with what Brother Zachwa said, knowing this now, can you read First Peter chapter 3, verse 7? Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and that being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen. That lets us know being fruitful in every good work and walking in the things that are pleasing to Allah Hayyam will increase us in the knowledge of Allah Hayyam to dwell with our households well. It's important for us brothers to give honor to them. We have to know that it's a, they have a certain process they have to go through and we have to be that living sacrifice enduring with them so that we may be knowing that we are heirs together of the grace of life. They are our flesh and our bones, and no man ever hated his own flesh. And that's why we're admonished as they are being grown in the faith so that we, our prayers don't be hindered. We must endure in the fruits of the Spirit with them. Amen. And this building, this knowledge of Allah, Hayyam, we are exhorted to grow in this knowledge and to understand it according to Scripture. Let's Read Colossians 1 and 10, please. That ye may walk worthy of Ahia, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of Allah. There we see good works. Growing in that increases us in the knowledge of Allah. Growing in the fruits. This will lead unto increasing in the strength of Allah Hayyam, which is patience and long suffering with joyfulness. This is the essential knowledge we need to give to our households and dwell with our households in so that we may on, give them the honor needed to patiently wait for them to grow. Can you read ver, first, I mean, Colossians chapter one, verse 11, please. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. That's what we're growing on to, so continue striving in that. That's what's going to bring our households around so that we may be in perfect unity through Allah Hayyam and as Allah Hayyam. This is the love we need to honor our wives instead of growing bitter towards them as they are being brought through the process of change Yache has for them. Can you read Colossians 3 and 19, please? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And there you see there are two contrary things. You either love your wife or be bitter against them. They don't go hand in hand. We have to stand on one side, on the side of love where Allah Hayyam dwells. Bearing a grudge against them for how they are treating you as you are working to change will cause your house to fall because what you do has an effect on your family. Can you read Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 2, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, please? But do thou, Hermas, no longer bear grudge against thy children, neither suffer thy sister to have her way. For though that they for so that they may be purified from their former sins. For they shall be that is important to understand. Sorry. Uh, uh no, um it might I'm sorry, you probably need to finish that so it makes sense. Sorry. For they shall be chastised with the righteous chastisement, unless thou bear a grudge against them thyself. 
the bearing of a grudge worketh death. And we see that's why Paul told us not to be bitter. Because the bearing of a grudge worketh death. We can't be bitter towards anyone in our household, our children, nor our wives. And by treating our wives as our sister, we are not to suffer them to have their own way. That means as you are making changes, you have to stand for the change. Gently stand for the change. It doesn't mean that we'd be a lion in our house. Right. But through entreaty, entreaty, and gentleness, and just doing what's right, waiting on a lion to cause the person to make the right choice. That is how we don't suffer our sister to have her own way. It's not to be controlling, but it's actually to set an example for her and not agree with anything that's not right according to the will of Allah. I am. And first, that this will help them be purified. Do right. <laughs> Amen. That's why we're going through this. Right. We have to good. get it together. That's right. Because you got to lead and guide the household, not force your household. Yes. Yeah, you're guiding them in the way that they should go. So that mm -hmm. gentleness, you have to operate in the fruits of the spirit. Because quite frankly, women, they have, uh, ever since the beginning, they have a problem with authority. Even from Eve or Chiwa, from the beginning of creation. So if you come at them in a harsh manner, they're going to reject it. So you have to operate in the fruits of the spirit brothers, you have to operate in the fruits of the spirit to be able to, to communicate with your wife, for her to be able to, to trust and follow your judgment. And our judgment is supposed to be in the law. So yeah. if we're walking contrary to the law, our women aren't going to have confidence in us. So we have to walk in the law and operate in the fruits of the spirit in order for our wife to follow after us. Amen. Amen. That will cause them to be purified from their former sins. And that's the righteous chastisement that they need. That's the holy um, calling that he actually has for us men to set an example for our wives. All right. And knowing the struggles we face in our lives, bro brothers, it has been a court because of our sins. Let's continue reading, please, Zachua. But thou, Hermes, has had great tribulations of thy own by reason of the transgressions of thy family, because thou hadst no care for them. Thou wast neglectful of them and was mixed up with thy evil transactions. So there we see for us who we've been in a world worrying about ourselves, doing our own thing and neglecting our family and the growth that's needed. Therefore, we've suffered many tribulations for our own transgressions and for what's happening in our family. It all affects us because we are the heads of the households. All right. And but even let's continue to get our exhortation. Oh, um, so I, I, yes, I see please. parts in here. Um, if you did watch the previous lesson, Building the Men in Faith, you will know that we covered a lot over the love of money pertaining to the men. And using, yes. and using Hermes' example, from the angel of repentance, his issue was he was neglecting his wife and family for the sake of evil transactions. It was for the sake of money, mm. for the sake of business. So we can't allow business and our day-to-day -day business uh, transactions and dealings cause us to neglect our family. We can't put that first. So uh, specifically with Hermes, that's exactly what, that was his issue. So I wanted to touch on that because it falls directly in place with what we were covering in the last lesson. And thank you for that. Praise God. That's right, good. Mm -hmm. um, well, verse two, we're ready. Okay. Yes, please. But herein is thy salvation. And that thou didst not depart from the living Allah I am. And in thy simplicity, in thy great continence, these have saved thee, if thou abidest therein. If thou abidest therein. So as we know from that lesson, how can we be saved? It's a process. We have to continue in it. 
So Herma, we can see how we can have some good works, but still be lacking as Hermas, he had simplicity and continence, yet he has struggled with the evil business transactions. So, yet, so now Allah revealed his sin unto him so that he can move forward and do it no more and continue in the simplicity and continence that he was in before. And simplicity and continence is very important for us because let's continue hearing what the angel said. I want to make sure that I clarify something. It wasn't the business. Sure. Thank you. It wasn't the business that that was called to Hermes to, to error. Um, this specifically said evil transaction, so that means that he was given a false weight and a false balance. So he was mm. he was doing corrupt business at that, and also neglecting his family because he was so focused on his business. So I I wanted to to clarify that so people wouldn't say, oh well, all business is bad. Me doing work, I don't need to be working. I need to be focused on my family. I don't need to work. If a man doesn't eat, if right. a man doesn't labor, he doesn't eat. So right. it wasn't the, it wasn't that that wasn't the issue. He just put the problem. The issue is not putting so much on the transaction and neglecting your family. So right. He he, he gave a, he was breaking the law altogether. He was giving an unjust way and an unjust balance the evil transactions so thank you for clarifying that to show it's not work itself right. it's doing evil works and neglecting the things that are needful at home for the sake of those transactions right. continue please um and they you are save, at... and they save mm -hmm. all who do such things and walk in godlessness and simplicity these so from what he witness. just sorry go ahead oh no these do prevail of all wickedness <laughs> continue please and continue unto life eternal all right so summarizing walking in guilelessness and simplicity if we abide in therein with great continence these would deliver us to prevail over all wickedness and continue unto life eternal this is essential, brothers. We need this godlessness and simplicity. Look the words up and practice walking in it and continence as well, please. Uh, let's jump and continue with Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 1, chapter 3, verse 2. All right. But the great mercy of Ahia had pity on thee and, and thy family and would strengthen thee and establish thee in his glory. Amen. That lets us know. It's Ahaya's mercy that's bringing this knowledge to us now to make us aware of what's been going on and know that it's him that can strengthen us to do this and establish us in his glory so it's not we doing it ourselves anymore. Amen. Continue, please. Only be not thou careless, but take courage and strengthen thy family. Amen. How do we strengthen our family? Continue, please. For at the smith hammering his work conquers the task which he wields, so also do a righteous discourse. Credit. Re repeat it daily. Sorry. Repeat it daily. Conquer all evil. That's how we strengthen our family. Righteous discourse repeated daily. Notice that's gentleness. Those are just words of righteousness, which sounds speech. Seasoned with salt, just speaking what's right and true. Exhorting. This is not being overbearing and controlling. Just speaking on what's right and standing for it. And not being careless, paying attention to what we're doing. All right. Continue, please, brother. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's um, all right. <laughs> um, it says, um, it says, so also do a righteous discourse, repeat it daily, conquer all evil. Mm -hmm. The the scripture says, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved, right? Okay. The interesting thing is, is that you can't get weary, even with your family. Because I know a lot of times we use that verse in reference to the walk. You know, keeping the mm -hmm. commandments, bearing the fruits of the spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the 
temptations that come with all that. But mm-hmm. you're not looking at what you have to go through daily with your family as a trial. Mm. People get weary in their relationships. People get weary with their children. This is part of the this is part of the, the, the trial. We have to we have to endure until the end. Constantly re- reproving our children, constantly um giving exhortation to our wives. Mm-hmm. It's an everyday it's an everyday struggle and it's an everyday trial. This and Alahan wants to see if we're going to continue in it until the end. Amen. That's the living sacrifice. Because you're actually continuing in it on to the end. For the saving of his house. Amen. And it's all important, brothers and sisters. Rebuke with love is better than a thousand rebukes. All right. That's important to remember. Continue, please, brother. Well, after Smith no, hammering as... his work. Oh, you got me. No, I, I got myself. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you want me to go? Yes, please. I do. <laughs> yes. Well, after Smith hammering his work conquers the task which he wills, so also do his righteous discourse, repeated daily, conquer all evil. Cease not, therefore, to reprove thy children. For I know that if they shall repent with all their heart, they shall be written in the books of life with the saints. Now, fathers, understand, you, all, you, all we, we must reprove the children daily, and they have to choose to repent. Right. It has to come from their heart. Children, are, they have understanding. Allah Hayyam actually controls the heart, so it's just waiting on him to get them to the right place, to hearken and do the right things. All right? This is a trial of our faith, fathers and men. Even that he can turn the household if we just do the simplicity of what he called us unto. Also, be temperate and patient in your growing process, because even as you grow into faith and are prospered in repentance, the wrongs of your household still have an effect on you. Can you read Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 7, chapter 1, verse 1 to 7, please? After a few days, I saw him on the same plain, where also I had seen the shepherds. And he saith to me, What seekest thou? I am here, sir, say I. That thou mightest bid the shepherd that punish, that punisheth go out from my house, for he afflicteth me much. It is necessary for thee, saith he, to be afflicted. For so saith he, the glorious angel ordered as concerning thee, for he wisheth thee to be proved. Why? What so evil thing have I done, sir, say I, that I should be delivered over to this angel? Now, this is important to see that Yache appointed Hermas to be afflicted so that he could be tested. So that's why we are to take our trials with all cheer, knowing that this is the will of Allah Hayyam. But let's understand why her, the weak, why in part we can also be delivered unto afflictions, not only for our own faults, but let's see what else. Continue, please. Listen, saith he, thy sins are many, yet not so many that thou shouldest be delivered over to this angel. But thy house has committed great iniquities and sins. And the glorious angel was embittered at thy deed, at their deeds. Excuse me. And for this cause he bade thee to be afflicted for a certain time, that they also might repent and cleanse themselves from every lust of this world. When therefore they shall repent and be cleansed, then shall the angel of punishment depart. That ties right into what Zachar said about enduring unto the end. We have to endure so long as that angel 
of punishment is there and Yacha is purged in our house. And this, this purging that we're going through is for the betterment and well-being of the whole household. Because he said that the, this cause he bade thee be afflicted for a certain time that they also might repent and cleanse themselves from every sin, every loss of this world. Your family, there's going to come a time, Lord willing, that as you abide in doing what's right, that Yache will open their eyes to see what they're doing is actually affecting you too. And repent of their doings. Every person has to see it for themselves so that they may come to the light of Christ and be changed. So hopefully that helps understand this affliction that we're enduring is not just for us. It's for the body, which is our house and for the brethren in the world. Um, you can, if you got something there, you can jump on in, brother. Of course. Um, and so rock, <laughs> as we read before, um, the Holy Spirit was glorified with a, 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 a man and his wife that agreed together. And we gave mm -hmm. the example of the Holy Spirit and the Father, Ahaya, working together and look how much they accomplished. Now we're getting a dichotomy. We're getting a husband and a wife that don't agree together, but are, walk, are trying to walk together. And look at the hindrance. Look at the hindrance on the whole family, not just the, not just the husband or not just the wife. But the hindrance mm -hmm. upon the wife not doing what's right and being hindered, the husband being hindered, the children being hindered, the whole family. So when you have those situations, when you're in those relationships and you guys are not in agreement, you guys are, are buffeting one another or, or having strife amongst one another, your house isn't going to prosper. You're going to have a lot more difficulties that are going to come because of you guys not being in agreement. So this is definitely a, a great admonition for the husbands as well as the whole family to definitely pray to Allah and work hard to be on one accord with one another in the gospel so that you guys can walk together and be prospered by Allah Because you see, the husband, Hermes, he was afflicted until his family got it together. And the husband's supposed to be the the, the leader of the house, the one that brings forth, you know, and, and provides for everyone. So if he's being hindered, the whole house is hindered. And that's why the men have to get it together first. That's right. So the house may have an example. Let's continue understanding how this, why it, why it works like this. Continue in uh, verse three, please. I say to him, sir, if they, her, her, perpetrated. Excuse me. I say to him, sir, if they, if they perpetrated such deeds that the glorious angel is embittered, what have I done? They cannot. That's be what one would ask. Right, right. <laughs> That's the first thing we would ask. Like, what did I do? <laughs> I'll tell you, please. <laughs> they cannot be afflicted otherwise, saith he, unless thou, the head of the whole house, be afflicted. Amen. For if thou be afflicted, they also of necessity will be afflicted. But if thou be prosperous, they can suffer no affliction. That ties into bringing the whole house together to the unity of Allah. If we are prosperous, they can suffer no affliction. That's why it starts with us. And if we're not doing what's right, they're going to also, they of necessity, they're going to be afflicted. So there is a great responsibility for us brothers. And we have to believe and work this process out with our whole heart. Um, continue, please. But behold, sir, say I, they have repented with their whole heart. I am quite aware myself, saith he, that they have repented, excuse me, um, I lost it. I am quite aware myself. That's the. Mm -hmm. But that's the, that was the angel responding to him, right? Now, right. now we've discussed those things. Now we're jumping to the part where, okay, now the whole family's come to repentance. Now, let's hear what happens in this process because it isn't over yet. Continue, please. 
I'm going to start back over. But behold, sir, say I, they have repented with their whole heart. I am quite aware myself, says he, that they have repented with their whole heart. Well thinkest thou that the sins of those who repent are forgiven forthwith? Certainly not. So far for, That's right. They aren't forgiven right away and then nothing happens. I'll continue, please. But the person who repents must torture his own soul and must be thoroughly humble in his every action and be afflicted with all the diverse kinds of affliction. And if he endure the afflictions which come upon him, assuredly, he who created all things and, and endowed them with power will be moved with compassion and will bestow some remedy. Amen. That's why we Amen. endure with temperance. Wait in our lahayim to have compassion to bring us out. <laughs> All right. Continue, please, brother. And this what Allahim do. If in any way he perceived the heart of the penitent pure from every evil thing, but it is expedient for thee and for thy house that thou shouldest be afflicted now. But why speak it's I many words to thee? Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, just it's expedient. So know that this is what's good for us. It's for our salvation. Continue, please. Because we want this affliction before it's too late. We want to take take it on now and get it together now. Go ahead, brother. But why must I speak many words to thee? Thou must be afflicted as the angel of Ahia commanded, even as he that even he that delivered thee unto me. And for this give thanks to Ahia, that he deemed thee worthy that I should reveal unto thee beforehand the affliction, that for knowing it thou might endure it with fortitude. Amen. Uh, Amen. Give thanks to Ahia. We know what we're right. getting involved in now. Praise him. <laughs> Praise him. Continue, please. I say to him, Sir, be thou with me, and I shall be able to endure all affliction easily. But I will be with thee, saith he. And I will ask the angel that punisheth to afflict thee more lightly. But thou shalt be afflicted for a short time, and thou shalt be restored again to thy house. Only continue to be humble, and to minister unto Ahia with a pure heart thou and thy children in thy house and walk in my commandments which I command thee and thus it will be possible for thy repentance to be strong and pure Amen continue please and if thou keep these commandments with thy household all affliction shall hold aloof from thee yea and affliction saith he shall hold aloof from all whosoever shall walk in these my commandments Amen. Amen. That's a good guidance. And the co the commandments of the angel of repentance can be found in the shepherd of Hermas. Brothers, take the time to read those commandments. They are important for us in learning the righteousness of Allahim. Let us strive for the salvation of our households. Their brothers, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man Please, despise thy example. youth, but be thou an example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Being an example to our how to our family is how we are to lead Alahim's heritage. First Peter chapter five verse three, please. Neither as being masters over Alahim's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Amen. In righteousness, we don't rule with an iron fist over our house, but in the gentleness and goodness of Christ, Yache, we set examples guiding our houses to follow Christ Yache in us. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 29, please. Right. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the Hopefully washing. we understand this better now. Yep. My bad. <laughs> yeah, you have Hopefully a, you we understand. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we understand what this means better now. 
Oh, uh, all right. Sorry about that. Now, hopefully we understand this better now through this discussion we've had today. We should have definitely grown today, Lord willing. Uh, and understanding the reason why we're walking in this love towards our house and giving ourselves up for it. Continue, please, brother, in verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Mm -hmm. Continue, please. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. And, and continue, please. So want men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man mm -hmm. ever had please. hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Amen. With that, hope this discussion was good and edifying and help give open our eyes to this calling and what process we're going through within ourselves and the process we have to go through for our household's sake for the name of the Lord Yache. All right. Hope this hope this helpful brothers. And that's it for now. Hope everybody enjoy. Yeah catch in catch on for the next lesson uh, of the series. Um excuse me. Uh how to treat a brother. And that's gonna be the next one. Yeah. I keep you all self to challenge. Um.